smartphone, have you got one of these and thinking, my information's safe? You could be wrong. In fact, you're very wrong. Listen to this talk, it's on James Lynn. He's an information security expert. He's a bit of a nerd. And he gives a demonstration on some of the tools and tricks cyber criminals are using to get access to your information and getting you to pay bills that you know nothing about. Watch it. It's about backdoor entry into apps that you're using. And it's just fascinating to know that this is happening and you've got to be aware of it. So I hope you enjoy it and thank you for watching. So when we look at kind of the big interesting trends of the last few years, there was this prediction that mobile was going to become this really huge place that cyber criminals would attack. And despite the fact that there are 3.5 million malicious Android applications in Sophos Labs collection, most of them, you've got to go to this weird, dodgy Chinese side-loading site to manage to get infected. Many people have kind of got used to, well, these devices are invulnerable. I don't really have to worry. We had a little perusal of uh, cyber criminal sites uh, just in the last few weeks. These are a couple of the tools for remarkably low prices uh, that are available uh, for purchase, featuring capabilities like extracting call logs, getting messages, taking pictures, all the kind of standard malwarey stuff. So this one here is a little backdoor generator for Android files. Uh, this particular cyber criminal has stolen from the open source community to implement their product, which I think is very disagreeable. And it'll take any Android file or any application. In this case, I've gone for the eponymous Flappy Birds and, um, and backdoor it. So let me just hit play here. Here we go. So we can choose a, we can choose a payload. In this case, I'm just going to inject one of the payloads from the Metasploit framework, because it's a little more visual for those of you that have used it before. It basically embeds a nasty bit of malicious code inside this APK file. And then it kind of reconstructs it, resigns it, makes everything kind of look OK. Now, whilst it's, it's doing that work, it takes kind of a, a minute to go through the process. I should note that tools like this have been around for a while. One of the applications, and I chose purposely the most stupid one, because there were lots where you went, I would probably install that. One of them was called Lovely Wallpaper. Well, 4.2 million people downloaded and ran this thing. And I actually thought their method of money making was quite novel, where they'd send text messages in the background to a premium rate number that they owned, and then they'd delete the text messages automatically so you couldn't see them, and you'd run up this eight or nine hundred pound bill, or whatever currency, depending on where you were in the world, and you'd only find out when you got an alert from the operator or the end of the month. Let me show you the result of this this APK. What I've got here is just an Android emulator running, so you can see both side by side. I'm going to open Flappy Bird. There it is. And uh, you can see, for the keen-eyed amongst you, as soon as that happened, we got this back door opening. Right, that's the malicious code triggering inside the application. Uh, and this, this bit of malicious code here gives us all those capabilities we talked about. Um, we can see what user we're running as download files, change files, modify text messages, all whilst the user continues to play their instance of Flappy Birds. All right, so let me dive into a different area here. It's not just the, uh, the problem of kind of backdooring phones. It's also the opportunity of fraud with phone devices. Uh, this is the fraud box selling presently for around $275. And it's a virtual machine phone which is designed to make it easy for cyber criminals to bypass security checks 
of financial institutions or other applications. It comes with the ability to spoof hundreds of devices. So you can say, I'm a Samsung Galaxy S7, and it modifies everything to look like one. You can then say, here are the GPS coordinates of where I'm located. And it will lie to any of the applications that are running, because some people are now using that as a security or reputation check when accessing apps. It's got a lovely spoof account holder details. You can spoof the telephone number. And it comes with a litany of banking and money transfer applications pre-installed with patches to make sure it doesn't detect that it's running on a virtual device. So just like we saw with mainstream cybercrime, mobile devices are getting some attention and love from cybercriminals. The general quality of, of spam and scams was increasing. And that's been a steady trend throughout this year. And I'm seeing more and more scams where I go, oh, the wrong moment. I could click on that. But one of the best social engineering techniques that cybercriminals seem to use at the moment is hiding in plain sight by just not tripping any of the filters of the security policy. Uh, this one here, the HM Revenue and Customs document, uh, and they've got this dialog box in the middle where it instructs you to click the exact buttons that will get you infected. Uh, but notice, there are no OK and cancel buttons, because it's an image. It's literally a picture of a dialog box. That's brilliant, isn't it? I mean, obviously, it's, it's really terrible, but it's quite clever. Using security vendors, borrowed authority, right? like we saw with fake antivirus back in Vogue, using file sharing applications and people's natural curiosity, cloud apps as an angle to get people to just click. There's a litany of really convincing, cleverly crafted stuff. There's actually a lot of special plugins in finance, in law in particular, where that has to be set to work with a lot of the tools that they use day to day. And as soon as you open that document, you can obviously use this back door to take photos of the screen, turn on the webcam, download data. Really, really easy stuff. So we wired these up and went through an extensive process of of figuring out how these devices were vulnerable. All I'm going to do is open up a web browser, access its URL, and it asks for a username and password. You can brute force this. Unlike lots of modern devices, you can just keep asking several thousand times a second, is the password this? So there's no brute forcing prevention. Uh, but my method was actually uh, to go to Amazon, look up the product, and in the preview window, uh, one of the previews of the box, if you zoom it up, has a sticker on the box with the password for the device. So that's a good hacking technique, right? This is a feature designed to allow the camera to back up data uh, that it receives on the camera, kind of stills. So all I'm doing is setting up the attacker system to listen for FTP connections. And in the user interface here, uh, I'm just going to insert the contents dollar open brackets cat slash etc slash pass wd. That's basically a bit of shell trickery to say, go get the contents of the password file and make it the username. So when we run this particular command, we go to my attacker's system hit enter a couple of times, it actually sends the contents of this secret file out via the FTP backup mechanism. We're talking command injection, right? SQL injection is embarrassing these days. Command injection is like a whole new level of embarrassment. Now, I'm no techie. I didn't understand half of that. But what I did understand is the different tools that cyber criminals are using to get access to my information. And I might end up paying bills that I 
know nothing about. And I'm blaming someone for going onto my phone when actually I could be the problem. If you are not aware of the situation, you're not going to know how to deal with it. And that's the reason why this video was particularly relevant. So I hope you enjoyed it. Please subscribe for more and thank you for watching.